and determine. So again, we do these experiments, we plot those values, now we can create a straight line, and from that straight line, we can determine some things. We can determine the y-intercept, which we take the reciprocal of that, now we know the v-max, and you can determine the x-intercept, take the, the reciprocal of that x-intercept, now you know the km. But not just that. So again, we did these experiments with this enzyme and plugged in those values and we got this line weaver Burke plot. But now let's do these exact same experiments. But now instead, each experiment, we've added one nanomolar of inhibitor. So again, we do the exact same experiments. But instead, the only difference is now we've added one nanomolar of inhibitor. So now we would expect if we did the same experiment, but now we have one nanomolar of inhibitor, the velocity rate would decrease. So now we would have a new velocity rate. So now that we have a new velocity rate, we would expect a new y value. And again, we would expect a new graph. So again, and now you could probably do some practice. Now, now that we have added this inhibitor and we have a substrate concentration in the velocity rate, remember, how can, it, how can we represent this, this point on, on, on this, this graph? Well, again, remember, you do the reciprocal. That's our numerical x-coordinate. And then you take the reciprocal of this guy, and that's our numerical y-coordinate, and that would represent this dot. And again, so you should do some practice and, and see for yourself. But the point is, we added this inhibitor, and we see our line weaver burke plot change. Remember, remember, this was without the inhibitor, but then we added the inhibitor, and now we see that the graph has changed. So now, based on the way the line weaver burke plot has changed, we can make some, we can make some, uh, we can determine some things. We, we, we can make some inferences. For example, we see as we added the inhibitor, we see the line weaver burke plot shifted upward, and we see now we have a new y-intercept. So what does that mean if we have a new y-intercept? That means we have a new v-max, because remember, this y-intercept tells us about the v-max. So what is the new Vmax? Once we, once we add this inhibitor, what is the new Vmax? Well, remember, how do we find Vmax? We simply just take the y-intercept and we do the reciprocal. It's just that simple. The y-intercept is 0 0.8, so do the reciprocal. Now you know the Vmax. The reciprocal of 0 0.18 is 1.25, so now we know the Vmax. So now we know the Vmax with this inhibitor is 1.25 micromoles per second. And we see the x-intercept has stayed the same, so therefore the km has stayed the same. So now we know the vmax has decreased, but the km has stayed the same. So once we add this inhibitor, vmax decreases, km stays the same. So we know when the vmax decreases and the km stays the same, that means we must have added a non-competitive inhibitor. That's the signature of a non-competitive inhibitor. So now we know, even if we didn't know what kind of inhibitor this was, we could do these experiments, make a line weaver burke plot, and infer that this must have been a non-competitive inhibitor. And remember, because these are reciprocal plots, you might think, it looks like that the plot went upward. It looks like the y-intercept increases. So if the y-intercept increases, shouldn't the v-max increase? Well, again, remember, this is the reciprocal. So the point is, going towards the origin is increasing. And, 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 and so it's kind of the flipped because it's reciprocal, it's the flipped. So again, I know these line weaver burke plots, I struggled a lot in biochemistry when I was first learning these with all these reciprocals. But again, the point is we add inhibitors. So we have a new line weaver burke plot and we can make some inferences. We can infer what kind of inhibitor it was. So now let's add a different kind of inhibitor. So let's say we do the exact same experiments, but we add a different kind of inhibitor. We add one nanomolar of a different type of inhibitor. So we do all these experiments. We get at a substrate concentration, we get these new velocity rates. And again, so we do this experiment, which we know we can graph. We can graph. And again, we know how we do this. Instead of taking the substrate concentration and finding the numer so again, the substrate concentration was two micromolar. So instead of look looking for the numerical two uh, micromolar, instead, remember, you do the reciprocal, and that numerical value is your x coordinate. And then this velocity rate, instead of looking for 0 0.625, Remember, you do the reciprocal, and that numerical value is your y-coordinate, and those coordinates will give you this dot. But now we add this new inhibitor, and we see the graph has changed. The line weaver burke plot has changed. So what has changed? Well, the y-intercept is the same, so therefore the v-max has stayed the same. But the x-intercept has changed. We see the x-intercept has gone towards the origin, so therefore the, 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 the x-intercept has changed. So now that we know the x-intercept, how can we determine? We know the x-intercept tells us about the km. So with this x-intercept, how can we determine what the km is? Well, again, remember, it's easy. You take the 
x intercept with this, which is 0 0.2, you simply take the reciprocal. Now you know the km. So whenever you have the x intercept, you simply do the reciprocal. Now you instantly know the km. So now we know the km was 5 micromolar. So now we know once we added this this inhibitor, the Vmax stayed the same, but the KM increases. Because remember, if we go towards the origin, that means the, the KM or Vmax is increasing. So again, we see the, the KM has increased. So we know this must have been a competitive inhibitor. Because Vmax staying the same, but KM increasing is a signature of a competitive inhibitor. So that's a neat way. Even if you had no idea what kind of molecule this was, you could do these experiments, plot the line weaver Burke plot, and determine this must have been a competitive inhibitor. And the one last example you'll see is maybe we, again, do the exact same experiment. So we do it without the inhibitor, and we get our line. And then we add it with an inhibitor, and then we get this line. So how has things changed? Well, we see the, the, the y-intercept changed, so therefore the v-max changed. And we see the x-intercept has also changed, so the km has also changed. So now that we know this y-intercept, how can we determine what the v-max is? Well, again, it's super straightforward. We know the y-intercept is 0 0.6, so simply do the reciprocal, which would be 1.67. So now we know the v-max is 1.67. And we know the x-intercept looks like it, around this value. So you find that numerical value, you simply do the reciprocal. Now you know what the KM is. So the KM would be 2.3 micromolar. So again, under these conditions with Vmax decreasing, but, but KM also decreasing, that's a signature of an uncompetitive inhibitor. So this was probably an uncompetitive inhibitor. So these are the line weaver burke plots. And using these line weaver burke plots, you can determine Vmax, KM, slope, and also you can make inferences.